The scripture today comes from Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, verses 1, and then verses 4 through 14. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles, and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord, the God of hosts, the God of Israel, and to all exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage, that they may bear sons and daughters, multiply there and do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile, and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare you will find your welfare. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let the prophets and the diviners who are among you deceive you, and do not listen to the dreams that they dream. For it is a lie that they are prophesying to you in my name. I did not send them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, only when Babylon's 70 years are completed will I visit you, and I will fulfill to you my promise and bring you back to this place. For surely I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for your harm, to give you a future with hope. Then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. I will let you find me, says the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes and gather you from all the nations and all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I sent you into exile. Word of God, word of life. Before I start, can we hear it again for Solve? Solve, you have such a beautiful voice, and thank you for being with us. Grace and peace to each one of you this day from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Before I go preaching and prattling on, I just want to say, Trinity, I am thankful for all of you. After all, I didn't make it to seminary on my own, but by God's grace, your generous support, and of course, a lot of hard work. So thank you, Trinity, because in you I experience the true love of Christ. And speaking of Jesus, today is Reign of Christ Sunday, or Christ the King Sunday, and there is no Jesus in this passage in Jeremiah. So if we need to, we're going to have to bend the rules a little bit to get him in. Pastor Chris, amen for Jesus. Amen for Jesus. This semester I'm taking a magnificent class called Law and Gospel. The law, as Martin Luther defines it, is what God has commanded us to do for our neighbors and for ourselves. The gospel, on the other hand, is what God has promised to do for us because it is impossible for it to be accomplished any other way. Martin Luther thought that pastors ought to know how to distinguish between the law and the gospel not only in scripture, but also in feeling and in experience. One of the reasons why a pastor would want to use the law and gospel lens is to read the Bible and determine where are the verses that have God's law and where are the verses that tell the good news. And so that's exactly what I did for our text today. But first, let me say a few words of the con uh, about the context of this passage in Jeremiah. Today's lesson from Jeremiah is from probably between the years 597 and 587 BCE. You see, Jeremiah was a prophet in the most difficult time in the ancient kingdom of Judah. It was during their destruction at the hands of the Babylonian Empire. In 597 BCE, the Babylonian army came and surrounded Jerusalem, forcing them to surrender. They surrendered and Babylon hauled off into exile most of the people in the kingdom that had any social status. The king, the royalty, the scribes, the priests, and they took them into exile in Babylon. Then the new king that had been set up by the Babylonians to rule following the exile of the previous king rebelled against the Babylonians. 
And this time, the Babylonian army came and utterly destroyed the city. They tore down the walls, they tore down every house in Jerusalem, and they destroyed the temple and the palace. And then there was a second exile, and they took the rest of the people with any social status into exile. Now I want to stop for a moment, and I want you to wrap your heads around what that must have been like for the people taken into exile, and the sense of utter despair and meaninglessness that had been forced upon them. Today's lesson from Jeremiah that I just read is Jeremiah's letter from Jerusalem to the people in exile. And it really is a mind-blowing thing because it says this. It says in verse 7, Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. They have been taken to Babylon by people who have destroyed their homes, lives, culture, and sense of meaning. And Jeremiah says, seek the welfare. The Hebrew word here is shalom, meaning wholeness and peace. So Jeremiah is saying, seek the welfare of the very people who did this to you. For in their welfare, you will find your welfare. In their peace, in their shalom, you will find your peace, your shalom. That's really an amazing thing, don't you think? That the very people that had exiled and destroyed the identity and sense of meaning of the people, God's people are to seek their welfare. Now, I don't think that any of us will go through life without experiencing some sort of meaninglessness or some events that question our being and purpose. What God says then in the midst of even the most meaningless experience Seek the welfare of those around you. Then God says a second thing through Jeremiah to the exiles in verse 11. He says, I know the plans I have for you, plans for good and not for evil, to give you a future with hope. This is really a powerful promise made to us. God is saying, I have a purpose for all my people, even in their worst moment in exile in Babylon. God is saying to those in exile and to us by extension that I will not give up on you and I will have a future for you. Now that's pretty good news, eh? And I could say amen and stop here, but there still are a few things left unsaid, namely Jesus. The other important why, reason why a pastor would want to use the law and gospel lens is, well, to figure out how to offer the good news, of course. And so here it is. As Lutherans, we believe that we are justified not on account of our works or merits, nor on our ability to fulfill God's law, but on account of faith in Christ who died for us. One particularly Lutheran way of expressing our vocation is to say that God has freed us from obligation to the law. God has freed us so that we might live lives of love and service for our neighbors. Only God is able to do that, brothers and sisters. Only God is able to free us from obligation. And in freeing us, God sets us free to love and serve the neighbors. So when we serve in God and the welfare of others, we serve not because we are obligated to in order to achieve something, no, we serve because in the promise of Christ's redeeming love, we are set free to serve out of faith, hope, and love. One of the best books I read in seminary is titled Mercy, written by Walter Casper, a Roman Catholic cardinal. In the book, Casper spends a portion of time answering the age-old question of how can God be just and at the same time merciful? Casper's answer? Casper says that God's justice is, in fact, God's mercy. He writes, in the heart of Jesus, we recognize that God himself has a heart for us, who are poor in the broadest sense of the word, and that he is therefore merciful. God's being is revealed in God's mercy. Mercy is the expression of God's divine essence. Isn't that beautiful? Some people want to criticize Lutherans, saying, you Lutherans, all you do is let people off the hook. 
Quit telling people that Jesus loves them so much. They won't want to go out and serve their neighbors. I'm here to say it is precisely because Jesus loves us and saves us that we are transformed to live a life of love and service toward our neighbors, not out of obligation, but out of faith, hope, and love for what Christ has accomplished for us. I want to end with a prayer, so will you please pray with me? Gracious God, we thank you that in Christ we are set free of our sins and free to love and serve. Help us, God, to shine the light of Christ into places of hopelessness and meaninglessness and raise us up to seek the welfare of the city. We pray for those in exile and pray that your love will reign. Let us rejoice today in Jesus Christ, our Savior, and may the Holy Spirit be with us, giving us deep faith. Teach us, God, to live for the welfare of others, for in their welfare we also find our welfare. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.